Hello friends, I am a very congested Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Studio Series number 44, Optimus Prime. Now specifically, this Studio Series figure is the Jetwing Optimus Prime. Whee! As you can see, he comes with a trailer. The trailer then can transform into the Jetwing outfit, a bunch of weapons, and that weird circular weapon storage battle platform that he sh featured in Transformers Dark of the Moon. So I've already gone ahead, unboxed him, because he is packaged in robot mode, and there are a lot of twist ties. I think I lost, I lost count at 18, but I think there are more than that. What we have is the figure right here. Now the first thing you're going to notice is the cab. It is the exact same Voyager class figure that we have gotten in the past year. In fact, here is the Voyager class figure that was released when Jetfire came out. So the only difference between these two is quite literally the yellow paint at the snout of the vehicle mode. That's it. That's the only difference. The trailer itself is pretty long. It's about 10 inches in length. It is the, well, it is a good version of the original G1. He's got that stripe going along the side, little Autobot symbol molded into the back of the vehicle mode or the trailer mode there. And this is a refrigerated trailer mode because that would be the refrigeration unit that has a nice little gray Autobot symbol there on it. The overall feel of the trailer is very light and very, how do I say, prob I don't want to say problematic. That's not really, it's not a problem. It's more just very light and doesn't hold together all that well. And that's because of the tolerances that are needed in order to transform. So a lot of stuff is folded up under there. He comes with two blaster weapons, one regular blaster, a single sword, an axe, and then a shield. So all of that is mountable in the deployed circular battle platform mode thing that he uses in Chicago. Now I realize I have not actually filmed a review for this dude yet, for this mold. We're going to start off in vehicle mode. Vehicle mode is fine. It has a little bit of oddities with, okay, there's obviously robot kibble happening in here. And yeah, there's a mess underneath, but it has probably the best or most complex transformation for a movie class or a movie version of Optimus Prime since Re Revenge of the Fallen's leader class. Now, to transform it into robot mode from the vehicle mode, we're going to start off by grabbing the front tires and literally pulling them down away from the body of the figure. Then, come to the back and flip the entire rear of the vehicle mode down and then fold out the feet and they will snap into place. Come to the fuel canisters and unpeg them from the body and kind of flip them out back and out to the side and then we could flip up the back of the vehicle mode. Grab the top of the vehicle mode and accordion it out away from the vehicle, rest of the vehicle mode. That will allow us to come here in the middle. Then we come to the front of the vehicle mode and kind of grab it and pull it away from the figure and split it in half. A little bit hard to do. Next, come to the front grills and flip them open. Then come to the top of the trunk or the top of the vehicle mode in the front of the nose and fold out the arms. And then we can grab these sections that are on the, in the back, fold them out, come to the top of the vehicle mode and flip out the head until it stops. And then those sections that we folded out just now will actually accordion out over the sides like this. Then these little air purifiers that are on the side of the vehicle, those will rotate out and will fold up into the back of the robot mode. 
So grab them, pull them out. Just kind of get everything out of the way. I realize I'm rushing a little bit. This is, this is not an easy transformation. I'm just going to say that flat out. So then the windows can fold in and peg into place like that. And then when you do that, the, these pieces always come out and become undone from what you just did. Not that big a deal, though. Ah, come on, you. Get back in there. There we go. Now, take these center pieces, fold them out, and then they kind of turn around 180 degrees, and then the arms fold out, up, and will peg into place. So, getting that back almost into truck mode, what we did was open the grill, fold out the arm, rotate the entire wheel well and front grill around 180 degrees, and then grab the arm and rotate it around 180 degrees so we can expose this whole section so it can fold back, or so down and in, and then we can snap that into place. And I will be honest, this is some real origami. This really was baffling the first time I did it. And even now, I've done it a couple of times. I've done it more than a couple of times with a couple of figures, and it still throws me for a loop each time. All right, get those in. Fold these flush. The grills. And next, the arms are crazy. So fold them down a little bit and fold them up. Flip the fists out. And then these will become the our forearms, like so. Do the same thing over there. Out a little bit and in. Flip out the fist. And these fold up to become the forearms, like so. And you saw we I put turn the let then you saw I already brought the legs down and turned them 180. Then these little wheels will fold up onto his butt or back of his thighs. Then his backpack will collapse down and peg into those grill holes and then this whole section will fold up and these guys will fold back and you can fold them down and out of sight like so and here we have Optimus Prime in robot mode and if you're wondering this guy's transformation is exactly the same and he looks just like this figure just a little bit darker and I'm not transforming him as well Saying that Prime is well detailed really doesn't sell the figure all that well. This is a fan freaking tastic looking figure. That head sculpt alone is nearly perfect. And the overall feel and proportion is probably the best figure at this size class that we've ever gotten. Yeah, it's really that good. And it's incredibly poseable. And I did forget one little bit of the transformation. These wheels can roll up to his upper thighs, like so. Yeah, it's a really good looking figure. Really good looking. This figure is also highly poseable. Head is on a ball joint, and it it is a bit limited, though, because, I mean, look at that face. He's got such a big face. Hinge in, swivel in the Swivel in the shoulders for 360 degrees. Hinge joint. Swivel joint. Hinge at the elbow. Swivel at the fist. For the legs, can kick forward and can kick back a little bit. He's just, you gotta move some tires out of the way for him to kick back. Can do the splits if you want. Thigh swivel. Bend at the knee is over 90 degrees. And then there is some ankle articulation. Forward, back in and out. Saying that he's highly posable doesn't really do him justice, and at this size class, he can also hold a bunch of other weapons, you know, his target masters or weapons. Now, size-wise, how does he fare against his brother here, Studio Series Optimus from the Bumblebee movie? As you can see, they're, they're roughly the same size, though the bulk on 
Bumblebee Movie Prime is much more pronounced than on Movie Prime. Oh, this is going to get weird. Bumblebee Movie, Movie, 2000... Ah, Michael Bay and Bumblebee. Now, with Michael Bay all the way in the back there, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the trailer. This trailer transforms, as I said, into two distinct parts. So, to start off with, come onto the other carriage and pull away these giant blasters, which... In the back of the box, look like they're painted differently. As you can see there, the tips are painted in a different color. Same on that one. So it's kind of a silver versus a gunmetal. We don't get so much paint on this set. I mean, it's all this weird off gunmetal color. Oh, well. So now that those weapons are off to the side, I'm going to reach inside and pull off the gun that the robot mode is supposed to use. This vehicle or this robot mode gun, I was able to fit inside the trailer. It actually will peg into or can peg into the side of the vehicle mode right here. So it's supposed to peg in like that when he's in vehicle mode or on the other side, upside down like so. That's the only place you can peg it in. It's meant to be wielded for the robot in this mode or like this. So, yeah, we'll put that off to the side back there. So, again, back to the trailer. Come into the bottom and just kind of push up a little bit while flexing the sides out. And the entire top of the trailer will pop out and like that. And this whole section will form the jet wing. We'll put that off to the side for right now. The weapon storage is a little bit nice. Or <laughs> it has some decent weapon storage. The shield is stored in the bottom, and then the axe is stored here on the side, and the sword is stored here on the side inside as well. So we'll throw those over to the side. First off, come to the rear wheels and unpeg them and fold them straight down until they snap into place. Come to the rear of the vehicle mode and open up the doors. And then grab this whole section and lift it up, unpeg it, fold it down, and then it will peg into place in these little bits or these little tabs sticking off like that. So then we can stand it up. And then we can kind of accordion the whole thing out, unpeg these gray loops, and they will fold in and peg into different points on the inside of the trailer thus giving the trailer its curved structure. This is actually really smart on Hasbro's part. I, I've got to give the designers credit. They came up with a really, really good idea. And these gray pieces do not feel floppy or limp at all. They feel nice and sturdy and pretty tough. So then we end up with his circular weapon plot form thing and then we can start adding weapons to it and here we have the whole thing set up obviously not without the wings and here we have the whole system set up without the wings prime fits pretty snugly in there the weapons all fit in predetermined slots that really the only way you could figure out where they go is by looking at the back of the box they're actually not listed in the directions which Again, are your typical studio series directions that are trash. It's okay. I like it. I think it works. I don't think we could use... I don't think we needed another Voyager Class Prime. I mean, this is the third at this point, but it's a nice touch. So, what about the wings? What about these things? Before we can add the, wing, before we can add the wings onto Prime, we do have to tweak his back just a little bit. So first... Flip the bits out, flip them around, or the gas canisters, flip them around, unpeg the first section, flip that whole bit down, and just leave them flush like that. And you can push that flat straight down on his back. So we want to give a flat surface for the jets or the wings to peg into. Now this whole section first will fold er. Now the jet section will unpeg from the roof like that, fold it out, or I should say down, fold the wings out, and then the entire wing structure 
will fold up again into the back. And then this whole bit will fold up. And this little bit will fold out and peg into prime. Before we do that, come to the outside, flip out these booster packs, like so. And that's pretty much it. So when you, when you do go into, I guess, storing him anywhere or just having Prime, you know, standing around, he could fold up like that. And then you can fold the wings out. Or you can technically fold the wings up when you want to store it in vehicle mode. But the directions specifically don't show that. They show you folding the whole or having the wings folded out all the way. So then this whole section will literally just peg into the back. So these peg holes up here will slide into those sections. These will bits here will connect to these sections. And then these bits will peg in down here. And getting everything lined up and into place is a bit of a pain. Oh yeah, I see what I did. I do actually need that little lip like that. And then this whole section will fit over his chest or over his shoulders. And just kind of peg. And I was being a doofus. These little protrusions actually slide over what was the top of the vehicle mode. And then you could peg these rear parts into place. And then these sections, they're technically supposed to attach to the tops of prime shoulders but they don't they don't really so then we can have old jet wing old jet prime here flying along and oh yeah there's that component that peg as well yeah i have i've done this a couple of times and i keep screwing that up because i keep expecting it to peg in differently so here's jet wing prime it's actually not too back heavy. His his limbs, <laughs> his joints are all tight enough that he holds together really well. And you can actually have him in the, I guess the, uh, the weapon pod fully armed up with the wings. If you're interested in getting him on a stand in this mode, there is a small peg hole in his butt. However, getting him onto that peg is a bit problematic. Just, there's not a whole lot of clearance under there. But here he is with his guns and his blasters. And he cuts a pretty good figure. I think this works pretty well, but yeah, you gotta be careful about him leaning back because he is pretty top-heavy like this even though his joints are nice and tight. Unfortunately, none of the stands that I have would hold him. They all just kind of collapsed. And I don't know. I, I kind of like this, but I really, really wish that these bits where the jet thrusters are weren't hollow. That really takes me out of the immersion. And I would have loved for there have been some extra plastic taken off of his head so that he could fully look all the way up as opposed to you know this half measure it works it's a good design and just a couple of things that i would have done differently with the mold i think would have worked also i seem to remember the guns in dark of the moon weren't held in his hand they kind of wrapped around his fists i would have liked that a little bit better that would i think i think that would have been cooler overall this works, but I think there are some third-party versions or some third-party designs that I think would work a lot better. And I'm actually surprised more third-party companies haven't created an, a better Jetwing Prime for this specific mold. Overall, this set is pretty cool, but if you've already got one or even two versions of the Voyager class Optimus, you really don't need this. In fact, I think the Jetfire plus Optimus combination is much, much better than this. Still, it's a novelty. It really is, especially with the giant, <laughs> giant circular weapon platform. That that's a nice touch. It really is. This this thing is actually pretty neat, but I feel it's unnecessary. It it never. 
never really jived for me in the movie. It showed up out of nowhere, and he's never used it again. So yeah. If you guys want to pick this up, I suggest heading over to Big Bad Toy Store. They have this in stock at the time of this review. I like this set, but again, this is now the third time I've bought Voyager Class Optimus. The other Voyager Class figure is somewhere. I really didn't need to pick up another one, but I am glad I got the set, so there is that. Follow the link down in the description if you feel like purchasing one for yourself. And please, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below, and be sure to hit that bell so you know when a new video is out. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the figure down in the comments. Oh, and I've been Ball Matrix, and I will...